Oh my goodness, welcome to episode 100 Patricia Rati. I'm Jazz Galati, your host, and it's so great to have you here. This is a special episode, so to celebrate 100, we're doing like a documentary, mockumentary, vlog kind of episode, but I still hope to give you so much value. We're going to talk some key lessons that I learned and we learned even, I'll mention about uh, Ricky's involvement in this, from the BACD conference uh, in Edinburgh, uh, where Pascal Manier came and just absolutely blew the stage away. So some key lessons from that, but also speaking to some other dentists, uh, some of my colleagues, some of the Patrus Rati that have appeared on the podcast before, and I hope to make it like a fun and entertaining uh, listen for you. Now, before we dive right in, the protrusive dental pearl for you is that um, you may or may not know this, now maybe you do, but if ever you've listened to any of the previous episodes and thought, you know what, I wish, um, like I'm, you're to maybe take notes. Some, I know some of the protrusive they show me on Instagram, they take notes of the episodes because they find it uh, very valuable, very educational, which is awesome. I love that. I think it's great to be an active learner. So if you're taking notes, but sometimes you wish you could just like copy and paste segments of some of the things that the guests say or I say and like uh, little communication gems, then every episode is actually transcribed uh, fully. They're like about 99% accurate. My, my colleague, Chris Sell, who's like my scientific advisor, uh, she does all the transcriptions. So you can check them out on the Protrusive website under the episode uh, blog, if you like. Scroll, scroll down and every episode is fully transcribed. So that's your big pearl that if you ever wanted like a database of everything that we've said on the podcast, it's all fully transcribed and ready for you. And by the way, also to celebrate episode 100, there's a little competition, a little giveaway on Instagram. So if you want to win one of the hoodies that, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see that I'm wearing. Uh, The new hoodies are even better than this. They're blue and gold, and it's pretty cool. Uh, And if you want to be in a chance to win a hoodie, no matter where you are in the world, then log on to Instagram, share the promotional video that I'm putting on. Uh, You'll see like the giveaway uh, video. Share it to your story and tell me which was your favorite episode. It could be like any episode from the archive. Which was your favorite episode to be in a chance? chance to win one of the hoodies and I'll reveal who wins live on the 21st of December. So if you uh, are a massive fan of the podcast, I really appreciate you. Uh, And if you want a hoodie, I'd love for you to tell me which was your favorite episode by sharing that video to your story. So do check that one out. Okay, so back to the main episode now. So the date is 11th of November, 2021. And I was on the late shift. So, you know, I do like a a late shift or an early shift. So I was doing a late shift in Reading, came to my parents' house in in London. And all of the last month, uh, me and Ricky now, uh, Ricky Bhopal, who's a prosthodontist, uh, he came on the podcast and we talked about productivity with the prosthodontist. So you may remember him from from that episode. Uh, We're like total geeks, right? So we were so pumped. We're like fangirling over Pascal Manier. Like... I'm, I'm kind of embarrassed to share this with you, but we made a little rap. Well, I made I started the rap and, and Ricky said he was going to finish it off. I'll, I'll tell you how that went. So we're like so excited and pumped and uh, so um, quite cringeworthy. But I'm going to play it for you just so you get the, the vibe uh, of what we were thinking. So I'm just going to play that now. What you going to say, Pascal Manier comes to the land of the USA. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. He's going to teach you DME. Okay, so uh, that was totally cringeworthy. I apologize uh, that your ears had to listen to that. But I just wanted to show you the vibe. Like me and uh, Ricky are super geeky. And the plan was that on the flight, uh, we'd be li- uh, working on it together just for, for jokes. And, uh, it, you know, he's, he's a brother from another mother. It's great to have him uh, as, as geeky and as goofy as I am. But here's the big problem. So the night before, so 11th of November, we're about to sleep. It's like pl- almost midnight. Uh, and uh, the plan was that Ricky was going to give me a 4 a.m. wake-up call. He said, Jazz, uh, uh, don't worry, I'll call you at 4 a.m. I'll be at yours at 4.30 a.m. We'll go to Heathrow and we'll fly to Edinburgh. That was the plan. So I'm like, cool. Uh, so 4 a.m. comes, my alarm goes off. Okay, no call from Ricky. 4.02, maybe I call Ricky. It's ringing. Okay, but he's not answering. Okay, so now I'm like, wait, what's going on? He's, he, he's, he should be on the road. He should be driving, right? Then a few minutes later, I call again and I call again and now it's going straight to voicemail. So I was absolutely um, shit scared because Ricky's a super organized person. Like if you listen to the productivity with the prosthodontist, he's like the 5, 5 a.m. wake up club. He is like super keen uh, and he was so excited for this. This is like on par with, I'm sure it will be his wedding day, right? So uh, this was huge. So for him to not pick up, was a very scary experience for me. So I was thinking, did he oversleep or something? But it's just not like him. It doesn't make sense. But then when it started to, to go straight to voicemail, so I was calling straight to voicemail, and now it was coming up to like uh, 5 a.m. And I was thinking, okay, I've got to leave for the airport now. What do I do? 
but I was actually genuinely scared, right? Okay, from the bottom of my heart, I was scared that he maybe he was in a car accident or the only plausible explanation that Ricky is not here right now with me to go to Pascal Manier is that he's dead, right? Because it just, he just can't miss Pascal Manier. You can't miss it. So I was like calling his brother. He wouldn't answer, obviously, 5 a.m. I was trying to get his dad's number. I was trying to get his uh, fiance's number. Like I was literally, I was messaging all his like best friends and stuff. Uh, I was really worried sick. So I was ready, I was panicking, I didn't know what to do. So I decided, okay, let me just get to the airport. Uh, and then if he, if I don't hear from Ricky, I'm not gonna fly to Edinburgh because my friend might have died and I don't wanna go to Edinburgh if my friend has died. And I mean, I'm being serious. I'm not saying for a dramatic effect. I was really, you, know, you can speak to Ricky, I was shit scared. So anyway, on the, on the taxi, on the way to um, Edinburgh, on, on the way to he, uh, the airport. And uh, I, I, on the way there, I get the call from Ricky. So I pick up Ricky's call. I'm like, dude, where the hell are you? And he's like, oh my God, I overslept. I'm like, oh my God, thank God you're alive. I'm just happy you're alive, okay? So he absolutely bombed it down to, to Heathrow. He missed the flight, unfortunately. Uh, I was just grateful that um, he, he was alive. I took the early flight. He paid a significant sum to, to come later. So we never actually got to sit on the flight together and continue the rap. So you can, uh, you can be very pleased to know that that's the end of that rap and we didn't develop it further because Ricky <laughs> came late. So that was a very scary start to the day. So I reached the convention center and I know that Ricky's gonna be on the next flight, business class, you know how Ricky rolls, uh, and uh, I know that he'll probably miss the first two hours of the lecture, so I'll be making notes for him. Uh, and it was a great vibe, great vibe at the place. These students, they give you their sort of uh, delicate badge and the, the goodie bag and stuff, and it's great to see students um, maximizing these opportunities. So if you're a student and you have the opportunity to go to a conference to help out and you get to absorb the knowledge for free, wow, you should totally grab those opportunities by the horns. So I think the, those students that were there, you did a great job and well done for, for putting yourself in an uncomfortable situation and, and going out of your comfort zone and being there. I think it's, it's absolutely great. So it was great to see some of, some of the students there. Hello, this is the future of our profession. So the morning of lectures started in a very inspirational way. It was Neil Cunningham talking about his expeditions to the South Pole and the North Pole uh, to raise money for uh, brain tumor research, which was really inspirational. Uh, and then of course, the man himself introduced by Tiff Qureshi, uh, Pascal Manier. I mean, what a presence this guy has. The way he comes on, the, the way he uh, spoke the whole day, the energy was just unreal. Like, top level speaker. It, 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 you know, I always admire these speakers that can hold an audience, a large audience, for an entire day. These keynote speakers, is absolutely sensational. Okay, thanks very much uh, for asking me to do this little short uh, piece. Fundamentally, to introduce someone very special who's speaking to us all day, and I'll just say, I'm not going to give a resume for Pascal. You can look that up uh, yourself. It's, it's long and very, uh, very glamorous, as it, as it well should be. But I'll say that, you know, in my long career, um, there's been moments where you watch speakers, you, you meet people, where there are key moments, I think, turn your direction. Um, and usually, I think, it's inspiration that kind of helps you kind of make that turn. Uh, over, the, over all of those years, I've probably, I'm sure many of you have seen hundreds of amazing speakers, and you can sometimes sort of watch them and you listen to them, wow, it's really good. But you go back to your practice and, you know, you're seeing your patients, and a lot of that stuff you forget quite quickly. Um, except for a few people, and Pascal is one of those people who literally every day in my career, something that he's kind of, I've learned from him, some inspiration he's given me, I apply that to my patients. And I, and I think that's why uh, my career has gone the way it has, because of listening to people like him uh, over that time. So it does take a certain type of person. It takes a person who is highly clinically skilled, clearly, but also has the right ethos, has the right passion, and it's just a good, patently a good person. And I think that comes through in everything that he does. So I'm gonna, enough of me, I'm gonna now say, please Pascal, come to the stage and please entertain us all. If you haven't heard Pascal before, I really do hope that you remember today and I think it will kind of go down one of those days in your dental history. So let's give a round of applause.
Now, obviously, I was not allowed to record any parts of the lecture. I just recorded like a three or four second snippets just for this podcast, just show you the energy and the style of presentation. So the colors and everything, it was, it was just a great atmosphere. Uh, so well done, Pascal. You absolutely blew the audience away. Uh, so many gems shared. So uh, from the lessons that you shared, uh, we've can, me and Ricky, just geek out and talk about it over 25 minutes, which is coming in the next segment of this podcast. Just keep listening. And me and Ricky just have like a debrief. I share with him what he missed in the first two hours uh, of, the, of, the, of the lecture. Uh, and then we continue about some of the key lessons that uh, Pascal shared on biomimetic dentistry uh, at the conference. And it was, it was great because in the breakout room, there was a great food, great banters, great to see everyone and uh, catch up with Patrice Rati. It was so good to see some of you guys there. Uh, it was lovely to actually see you in person. Uh, Pascal was doing the book signing. You know, he's like a some kind of superstar. He was doing a book signing. I approached him. I asked him to come on the podcast. So this is my letter to Dr. Manier, inviting him to the podcast. There we are. Pascal's going to come on the podcast. He just said it. The second most famous dentist ever after GV Black. <laughs> Met here today who listens to the podcast. Rupert's been a guest before on the Suction Complete Dentures. Uh, so I just want to check the vibe. Have you been here for the whole few days or just today? No, no. Okay, just, just today. Just today yeah. you to the miss, are you coming miss, to the party tonight? Miss, yeah, I'm going. But I missed the last night party. That's why everyone is hungover today. No, I heard. Yeah. Yeah. You look fresh. You look good. I look fresh. Uh, Mehi's on my naughty list for for splint course for, for for signing on and not doing anything. So, <laughs> so he, he he needs to to, I to confess. move. <laughs> I confess. Rupert, how's it going, man? Uh, really good. Uh, here yesterday, so I was at the party. So I'm one of those people who's struggling That's today. <laughs> That's why I don't sound quite as uh, fresh as always, but uh, really good. Manier's on fire, so uh, you're going to see some more of that, I'm Rupert, sure, now. Tell us about what the program you're doing for BACD next time. So, I don't, don't know if it's been announced yet. It's all <laughs> secret. Uh, uh. Um, potentially. <laughs> okay, imagine you were doing a program for a uh, famous cosmetic institute. What would you do a program on? Well, it might be a Newport in South Wales, but uh, it's uh, digital dentures, so we're going to do workflows, analog, analog and digital hybrid, digital, compare and contrast, and see what works for you guys. May, what's the vibe like here, man? Amazing, amazing. Like, a bit dead, but great. <laughs> oh, I love it, love it. He's alive. He's actually alive. Ricky, how's it, how's it feel? How's it feel to be I alive? made it, man. I made it. This, this, this idiot had me worried sick, and he, he missed Pascal Mania's first couple hours. You know, something, the guy he idolizes. How'd you, this is just, you know, you need a slap. You can do it, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna delegate your mum to slap you. Slap myself if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm looking forward to the rest of the day, man. Uh, I, I, I made notes for you, Thank you. Uh, which I'm gonna share with you guys as well. Thank you very much. But uh, this, this is gonna be epic. I'm gonna start making some notes now as well. Okay, number one, make sure you wake up in time and go to Jazz's house for 3 a.m. and don't miss the next flight. And don't have to upgrade to business class on your next flight. <laughs> Dude, do you know what they gave for business class? What? A ham and cheese croissant. And the tomato was so hard. You don't get anything in economy, so there we are. <laughs> okay, Ricky, I can't believe you're actually alive. So here we are uh, in, in a, a hotel nearby, which was... Uh, we didn't book this one because it was cheapest. We, we didn't do that. We certainly yeah. wouldn't, would never do that. We booked it because it's very close by, happened to be close by, uh, not because of cheap, convenience sake. Convenience. Uh, where the hell were you, man? Let's just say um, my stag is coming up soon and uh, I just wanted to give you a taste of what it's going to be like. Man, I was worried sick this morning. <laughs> but anyway, I'm so glad you're alive and you came. You only missed the first two hours uh, of Pascal Manier, which was, how, how good was Pascal Manier? Oh man, dude, this guy was absolutely phenomenal. Um, Nothing short of excellent. I've read his book. Uh, 2002. Four, yeah, to, the 2002 Bond in Porcelain Restorations. Um, you know, that, that book was, I read that about four years ago. And I was just like, this guy just is amazing. I, I, he knows what he's talking about. Um, so I was really excited to see him today until I missed my damn flight. <laughs> you caught the most of it. Uh, I'm just going to summarize a little bit about uh, what, what, what he said in the, in the first couple of hours when you weren't there, actually. Yeah. So uh, basically, he showed this case and he, he apparently published about this in 2014. So I, I must have missed it. Mm. But he shared this case whereby um, there was a 14, not 14, there was like a, a teenage girl uh, and her wisdom tooth was uh, decoronated or coronectomy was taking place. Okay. And that crown, the wisdom tooth, was milled to then provide her mother's onlay. So this was um, the material of the onlay was enamel and dentine bonded to enamel and dentine. Uh, had you seen that case before? What? The, I've never heard of that. So he, he showed that today. Wait, wait. So from one patient to another patient? Yes. So this was from the daughter yeah. um, who needed a wisdom tooth out anyway. And then he, he actually embedded it into the, the milling machine 
and then actually milled the and then actual milled crown. The, the so the, the enamel shape was the same, yeah. but the inside of it was it's like a internal for the, for the prep, for the prep, yeah. for the prep. So oh. that was pretty cool. So you missed that. So I wanted to tell you that. Then he talked about the usual Pascal things that like talk about, like the ferrule, right? The importance of ferrule, uh, and he's very anti-post. Uh, and all the studies show, like you know, we all know already. Everyone listens to podcasts. If you don't know already, posts do not strengthen the teeth. Okay, the only function of a post is to retain a crown. That's it. Uh, and what he was showing, all the data that he has, and all these studies are out there already, is that even those cases where you don't use a post and you allow your composite core to go into the canal mm. and come out, and essentially you got your block of composite as a post. That was, there was no difference in the failure rate compared to just putting a post in. So essentially, don't put a post, but ferrule is king, okay? Oh, yeah, ferrule. ferrule is king, and I don't think that was anything crazy they put there. Just some promising data about the Everex composite, you know, the, 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 the composite with the fiber in it. Any experience yeah. with that? Yeah, yeah. Um, I actually use Everex Flow Dentine quite a lot for most of my posterior work. Um, and I, I really like the composite. I don't really tend to use bulk fill too much. Um, unless it's for a core and I'm trying to build the tooth up quite quickly or if I'm you know mid prep and I need to take an old restoration out but I think it's a really good good really good material you're getting the reinforcement of the you know the short fiber reinforced composites um, so yeah I, I really like the, I think definitely that watch that space as more data emerges but it definitely is um, a promising material uh, now one thing that I think you'll really love is we know that Pascal is a huge fan uh, not because he's endorsed by them, but because he's done the research and he knows that the fourth generation bonding system, uh, OptiBond FL, is the best. It's like, the, you know, the it's highest gold standard, gold standard gold highest standard. bond strengths, uh, the higher uh, filler particle in the actual bond part of it is, uh, the adhesive part of it is, is pretty cool. It, it's good handling and whatnot. But here's uh, interesting things which Pascal taught me today, which you missed, uh, which I'm going to fill you in. There's like the fill, fill Ricky in before we <laughs> discuss uh, uh, the bits about when Ricky was there as well. The interesting thing is that he actually says, don't use a bottled bond system, any. So he likened it to, um, like my son Ishan, when he was teething, he had something called uh, Sophie the Giraffe. Have you, have you seen these? No. So Sophie the Sophie. Giraffe is like this famous French toy, where, which uh, babies sort of bite on and it's for teething and stuff. Uh, and what, what they did one day is that they cut open a Sophie the Giraffe and you don't want to see what is, what's inside there. It was just like gunk and bacteria. It's all black. Probably, right? I mean, you didn't show the visuals, but I can, I can, I can imagine, imagine it, right? It, yeah. It's always in a kid's mouth and all the leakage and whatnot. So essentially what you're saying is that if you're using these bond bottle for months and months and months and it's open and stuff and back, you know, the bacteria in the environment, viruses, etc., it's probably a, a contaminated surface. Also, the filler particles probably sink Sinks, right. to, 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 to the bottom. So he was not only recommending Optimon FL, but he, was, had, he, he had a big cross next to the Optimon FL, the bottled system. He's actually saying, let's use the unidose system, so that you got the right amount of uh, primer, right amount of uh, bond, and they're fresh, it's fresh. Uh, and it's like easy to shake and stuff. Um, it's, it's similar to when you're using silin, silin coupling agents. Don um, you, you, you touched you, on that later, yeah, but he, yeah, for the did, listeners, did, did, expand was... on that. Hi guys, this is Jazz interfering with this very important message about FRD. So FRD stands for the Fellowship of Restorative Dentistry and it is just next level of dental education. This is the new way to learn without flights, without hotels, uh, with a cloud-based simulation system. So essentially they send you like a kit, a mannequin kit, a HD camera, and you got Lincoln Harris and Michael Mokers uh, and these great educators like Lane Ochi on the other side of the camera saying, no, you better just do your bevel like this and you better do a bit more of occlusal uh, depth groove or whatever. So this is the next level of dental education. The tagline of FRD is single tooth to full mouth rehabilitations in four hours a week. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, and I'm gonna just talk you through over the four modules it has. So first you do posterior dentistry restorative fellowship. So this is where you learn about quadrant isolation. You do composites posterior from bioclear technique to conventional uh, sectional matrices, how to critique the literature when it comes to uh, these restorations, pain management for long procedures, photographing quadrants, uh, vertical preparations, indirect, direct, the whole Whole lot basically uh, managing occlusion with quadrants then it moves you on to uh, and, and this is going to be by the way the module one is february 2022 and module two is in august 2022 so the frd is a two-year course it's a it's a big serious commitment here so august 2022 is when you start covering anterior dentistry so this is uh, from the shape of teeth to isolation to the bioclear method surface texture uh, shade matching preps cores dealing with dark anterior teeth uh, so lots of hands-on uh, 
uh, I think Lincoln said it's over 520 hours of CPD or, or CE, depending on where you're from. That is insane. Module three looks into veneers. So you've got a whole module on veneers from uh, resin to, to uh, ceramic, how to temporize, smile design, uh, ceramic choice, uh, live patient demonstration, which is pretty cool, case mentoring, uh, and then you get to do a hands-on with for ceramic and for direct layered veneers. Moving all the way to August 2023, when you do the big one. This is the Full Mouth Re Rehab Restorative Fellowship. So uh, that is uh, in August 2023, and you cover everything from communication, treatment planning for rehabs, red flags, occlusal vertical dimension, how to manage the OVD, uh, occlusal design for success, uh, cementing and bonding full arch cases. Uh, this is a good one. Informed consent and financial consent. So when it comes to doing full mouth rehabs, this is a bit that no one actually covers, the how to actually communicate a full mouth rehab. If you can't communicate a full mouth rehab, how are you gonna do one? So if you're looking for a, a comprehensive restorative course, taking you from single tooth all the way to full mouth rehabilitation over two years, uh, that's a fairly good pace, I think. So this is not only the future of dental education, it is here and it has performed. And I've seen the wonderful things is done for my colleagues like Stephanie Hurt uh, in Switzerland and Noor Sharif in the UK. I've seen their development on the Ripe Global Group and posting their cases. It has been absolutely amazing just seeing their development. So if you're looking for a comprehensive course like that, they've got around, I think from the time of recording, 12 places left uh, and I have got a coupon code for you from Protrusive. It's $750 off their course. So if you're thinking, okay, how much is it? Well, it's roughly around about 26,000 Australian dollars or 17,000 US uh, dollars or around about 13, 14,000 uh, Great British pounds. Over two years, that's I'm sure you agree, pretty good value for what you're gonna get out of it. I paid more for that for my ortho diploma, actually, there we are. So uh, it is uh, in that way, but if you want uh, a sweetener, uh, $750 off, uh, valid only until 24th of December, then head on over to protrusive.co.uk forward slash FRD. That's Fellowship of Restorative Dentistry, FRD. So protrusive.co.uk forward slash FRD for a bit more information, uh, a brochure, uh, and to get your $750 off uh, the FRD. So those of you considering it, uh, a, lot of been, a lot of chats been happening on the Telegram groups. Uh, there we are, you can download all you need to know from that website. Uh, back to the main episode. We were talking about uh, you were, the, I mentioned oh, about the, 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 the one bottle, and then you talk about silination, how that applies to silination. Yeah, so, you know, the, it was actually in his first book. Okay. Um, he, he discussed it then as well. Um, ideally not using two, um, one bottle because you know everything is gonna gonna stink to the end of that bottle. I mean, just just for any new listeners, any young, I got some students now listening. What is silane? When would you use a silane typically? So silane is where you'd want to be bonding on porcelain restorations, um, and it, it just comes down to so if if your porcelain contains silica. Um, Long story short, you want to basically be able to bond to those silica particles, and that's what the silane agent actually does for you and then you got your adhesive um, which bonds to your silane. Silanated porcelain uh, surface, highly active uh, surface, um, brilliant. And, and so, but, don't, so yeah, don't yeah. use the one bottle system. Yeah, don't use the one bottle. It may be cheaper but is it cheaper actually? I imagine sure. it would be because a two bottle system, two bottles, two bottles uh, yeah, I yeah. imagine there's got to be a, a cost thing. Uh, also the date, the expiry date the expiry on these things. Date. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's an inconvenience factor that they run out of date sometimes. But the, the yeah, so by using two bottles, it's a fresh silence. Is that, is that yeah. the main point, right? Yeah, this, so it's all fresh. So same same thing applying to the bond bonding agents. Oh, there's a nickel one there. Hey, come, come here, man, come here. We've got, we've got nickel now as well. One of the, the, the beloved producer writing, Nickel, come here, man. Show your pretty oh, face here. Come here, come here. Come on. Show off that bow tie, dude. Oh, Look at that. Okay. This <laughs> better not be live. This is not live. It is live. Um, right. right. So um, we were just recapping about uh, what I, I talked about, how he loves the, the Optibon FL Unidos. Mm -hmm. And that was a pretty cool thing to, to, to learn yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then uh, Ricky just added that, you know, even when we're using silane, not to use one bottle, use uh, two bottles. You were there for that bit, right? Yeah, yeah, Okay, yeah. fine. Uh, what was your, like, what is that one thing that you learned today that you think, wow, that was worth worth it, my, you know, worth him coming for me to see him, that this is the best tip? Yeah, uh, I would, he had many tips, but I think the best thing about today was the inspiration you get from such an eminent speaker. Seeing his cases and aspiring to be like that is what you always, you know, hope to see at conferences like this. And this is probably one of the best I've been to for, for a long time. What about you? The best oh. thing that you, because you, he, he, you know, I told, I told Ricky, let's do this. And Ricky bloody went and got his uh, entire <laughs> iPad as he was, making, as he was you know, making notes the whole time. So Ricky, this better be good, buddy. The, you, I mean, it depends if I can make sense of my own writing. <laughs> I never could, I never could. But anyway, give, give, give your best tip because I want to talk about think, one more thing thereafter. I think um, 
touching on what uh, Nico said, I mean, a very inspirational speaker, um, amazing to to hear like in in the flesh. Um, so many clinical tips. I think one of the things that really struck out to me was the use of um, PTFE and the lack of sectional matrices when trying to close diastomers mm -hmm. or black triangles. So he was saying that he likes to get PTFE and basically put it against the adjacent tooth and then actually make your composite against this. Um, so I found that was quite interesting because, you know, we're kind of ingrained in our minds uh, to always use, whether it's a clear strip, whether it's, you know, um, I've used the, the Tor VM anterior uh, matrices. So I think that it was... Is, it's actually, on that point, it's actually a, a, a Tor VM is that the posterior matrix used vertically mm. for that scenario. Same with the SB100 from the garrison. Yeah. To, to, and I find that good because it, it, it gives you so much control to get a nice, neat finish. But the, the, what, what Pascal was arguing is that when you used a curved matrix in an interproximal area, you get a point contact. Whereas broad, he, yeah. yeah, he wants yeah. flat to flat broad. Um, but, but just seeing even the images, like it looks messy. Like imagine you got PTFE on the tooth next door and you're just pressing that composite up against the, the PTFE. For me, it just, my OCD goes out of control here. It's, it's very messy, but this is the technique that you use. So before you tell everyone how you get around that and, and some tips on, on use, doing it the Pascal way, let's call it, it's so called the Pascal and Ricky way. Um, <laughs> no, no, what, 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 what way do you at the moment manage it? It depends on the situation. Okay. If I'm closing a diastema, then that way I find it's easiest. Like the Pascal yeah. Ricky way with the PTFE? That's right. If it's okay. a class four. <laughs> Don't say the <laughs> Ricky way. If it's a class four, I either use a strip or a, or a matrix depending on the shape I want to get. I quite like the mylar pull when you've yeah, got this content. Mylar pull is yeah, good. Yeah, but good. but you know when you have got the PTFE, how are you managing it not being so messy and like the floss tearing afterwards and and just just being a total mess. Well, um, I think first of all having good quality PTFE because you don't definitely don't want to be using like the cheap stuff that you can get out there. Um, I'll be honest, I don't actually know where we order it from. Uh, shout out to our head nurse who's the one who normally orders everything uh, she gets some good quality stuff but yeah the PTFE quality you want something that's quite you know thick um, you want to hold it taut against the tooth next door you want to actually um, floss the PTFE down so it's going into the gingival crevice of that adjacent tooth as well but don't you find when you floss that PTFE sometimes just crimp crimples up. up so it depends on the floss you're using so I use um, floss tape Mm -hmm. And when I'm actually flossing, I'm making sure I'm holding it really taut and holding it so it's like it's almost like a, a mini um, like mylar strip, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. So you're kind of like really pushing it down. But um, I use this technique quite a lot when we're doing injection molding cases as well, when you're trying to like really isolate that gingival crevice region. Um, and then to try and keep it less messy, uh, the Applica Twist is an instrument from LM Art Kit. Uh, sorry, actually, not, it's not LM Art Kit. Have you heard of this? No, I haven't, I haven't uh, heard of Applica Twist. It's a, it's a style Italiana. So you've got the LM Art Kit, which has the five mm -hmm. st standard instruments, um, but they brought out like newer instruments. So it's a very thin flat plastic, okay. basically. Uh, um, it's like the IPC. ICPL, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so you can you can use that to basically really sculpt your composite. Um, and then I like to finish it off by just taking that floss once i've put the composite on once it's cured no 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 before oh it's cured. okay so uncured composite here and you're flossing yeah it just sounds like so much mess it and is. oozing and yeah i think um i think one of the things that really struck out to me today uh, from the course was that it's not necessarily what some one person does it's what works in your hands oh, yeah. um because yeah. pascal showed us so many different techniques um, of how he restores using composite, the direct way, the indirect, semi-indirect. And, um, you know, I think we, at some point during the, the conference, I think I turned to both of you and said, you know, I don't think I could do something like that. Um, but, you know, he shows it beautifully. So this technique is just something that I've, I've used in the past um, where I struggled with the mylar strip. So I actually figured it out by, by accident. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say give it a shot. Mm -hmm. Give it a shot. I think he said it himself, uh, Pascal. He said uh, that my job is to give you the armamentarium and then yeah. you choose what works for you. I think I even wrote that down. Because <laughs> my job is not to tell <laughs> you what to do, but give you options. There we go. There we, there we go. are. Yeah. Pascal's job was not to tell you what to do, but to give you <laughs> options, guys. Listen, uh, we have to head to the party now. That's why we're dressed up with the gala dinner. Uh, and uh, thanks for listening for this one. I've, I've gave 
Pascal the invitation, as you know, yeah, and and Pascal gave um, Ricky an Indian blessing, which uh, the whole video is going to be on here. Um, so yeah, thanks for listening, and uh, hopefully Pascal will now, following from, from, on from this, come on, and uh, you can blame Ricky for not making a, a more proactive podcast today because of him missing his flight. Thank you, Ricky. <laughs> it, it was it was in my defence. Um, many things happened. It was a series of unfortunate events that cascaded sequentially, uh, progressively getting worse. We're going to miss our bus now. When, 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 when airplanes, when, when airplanes uh, fall, when airplanes fall, it's never just one thing. It's like a, a multiple, it's, it's not because the pilot was drunk. It's because the pilot was drunk and the co-pilot like, um, is not having a great day. And, and the, there's a, like a scratch on the engine and, and someone forgot to like twist a knob or something somewhere. And, and that's how airplanes fall, everyone. So shout out to, to Nikhil Kanani there. It was great to catch up. Always great. I always see him at conferences. He's such a great guy and he was part of that as well. So uh, Nikhil, Ricky, thanks so much for, for making Protrusive what it is with this episode and sharing some of the nuggets and your, your vibes from that Pascal Manier uh, lecture. Uh, and it was great to have the party at the National Museum, which was absolutely uh, beautiful. What a great venue that was. Uh, and then the funny thing is when we got, when we got the flight back uh, in the morning, you know, Ricky being Ricky, he, he completely like, you know, I used to hold him in such high regard. I still do, brother. Don't worry. Like high regard, like what an organized guy, right? But anyway, we, we get to Heathrow and because he's parked at short stay uh, uh, car park, um, he had a very interesting um, parking ticket, let's say, uh, which I may or may not reveal what it is. Uh, and then uh, while he was going to drive me home, because I live quite close to Heathrow, well, my parents live quite close to Heathrow Airport, um, the next uh, curveball was that uh, Ricky had no fuel. So we were uh, on reserve fuel trying to get to the nearest uh, fuel station, which was, again, a, a super stressful experience for me. Uh, and I'm just going to play a little segment from the end of the trip of me and Ricky just having like uh, reflections uh, of, of the day, of our interesting and fun day, educational day at the BACD. All right, we're back, back in London, got a flight back now, end of BACD, which involved um, Ricky driving us on reserve fuel to the nearest petrol station. <laughs> this looks so bad. And uh, paying a £147 uh, parking fee, not even a, like a fine. Uh, this is how much the short stay car parking the lesson for two days. And you, the funny lesson thing is, is, if you just looked like, it was like two days and like, like five minutes, isn't it? You come <laughs> find the floor, <laughs> it would have been like less. Yeah. £147 of parking, guys, that's crazy. Oh my God. Anyway, Ricky, I just want to ask your reflection on BACD conference 2021, seeing is believing. Well, seeing literally is believing because that's the first BACD I went to. Um, I think the, the whole day, the organization was pretty phenomenal, I thought. Um, venue was amazing. Also, obviously, Pascal was absolutely brilliant. Um, I learned a lot, uh, met a lot of cool people. Um, and, and we found out that next year it's in Wales. And a certain Frank freaking Spear, oh my God. Frank freaking Spear from Arizona will be coming next year. So you better believe I'll be booking my ticket to see Frank. Probably gonna go for the whole three days. Um, you'll you'll be there, right? Yeah, that guy, dude, that guy is amazing. Um, I actually signed up to his online course back in 2016. Oh, I've I've learned so much from Spear Online. Yeah. Really great uh, educational online. resource. Uh, so I've got a lot of time for Spear Academy and whatnot. Love to go to Arizona one day, yeah, but sure. Arizona is coming to us. Arizona so next year, Arizona. Wales, November, uh, BACD. I'm looking forward to it. I'll see you guys there. Uh, hopefully me and Ricky will not be on the same flight because I can't deal with uh, like <laughs> a couple more hours with him and I'm gonna get a heart attack. So yeah. also oh he was snoring the whole night and he's got sleep apnea, like yeah, mo moderate to severe. So diagnosed now, man. Damn. I officially did his sleep test the thing for is him. I've got a mandibular advancement device. Clearly, it doesn't work very he well. Doesn't, he wasn't wearing it last night. So, Sorry, dude. Sorry, dude. <laughs> peace out, everyone. So there we have it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this uh, slightly different uh, um, episode. If you enjoyed it, let me know. If you don't like this uh, kind of thing, let me know as well. I'll, I'll, I'll try and do less of these. I uh, hope some of the lessons we shared, Pascal Mania, which, by the way, I have been in touch with Pascal. Uh, he's keen to come on, but he's such a busy guy. Uh, so we'll see when that happens, but it'll be great. Pascal, it'll be great to have you. So if you're one of my listeners in USC, University of Southern California, and uh, you see Pascal all the time, just give him a little, uh, you know, elbow in the rib and say, yeah, when are you going to go on the Protrusive Dental Podcast? Okay, just get him to, to, to warm up a little bit okay so anyway i appreciate you guys so much for listening to this 100th episode uh look forward to so many more the christmas break is coming up now i'm still going to be getting out a few more episodes but the big thing the big thing i'm focusing on now is the app like the app is coming uh, and this is so that 
all the listeners who want to can get CPD, i.e. CE, verified certificate. You can answer some uh, multiple choice questions, uh, give some feedback, uh, and that way you can get a verified certificate. You can get a few other extra perks, uh, and it's a bit like a membership. It's a bit like a membership thing, but for those people who listen to Protrusive all the time, I think you'll gain so much value for it. So uh, that's the main thing I'm working on, as well as the 21 Day Photography Challenge, which I've told you about as well. So lots of big things coming at the moment. I'll keep you posted. But thanks again for listening all the way to the end. I always really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And if this is the last time you listen to Protrusive this year, I hope you have a very happy Christmas. I wish you and your family all the best of health and a very happy 2022.